when we uh, came to Tom for this show, I mean, it was kind of a, a radical idea to, you know, put his work in these different installations. And I have to say that uh, Tom was so great that he, that there was nothing that I couldn't do. I had total freedom. There was, there was no rules. He just said, do whatever you want. And, and this is the show. I mean, he didn't put any regulations at all. So it's all your fault. <laughs> but you know that is true because I, I really thought I told I told our staff I said you know all this is going to be is a chance for them to play this whole thing for irony and and turn me into even more the uh, the whipping boy of the of the critical elite you know because they're going to just you know oh this is obviously catch that was I thought what the creative approach but what surprised me and I thought was extremely sophisticated is that Jeffrey didn't take that approach. I did. I exerted zero influence on this entire exhibit yeah, because I just met this man about an hour ago. Although I feel like we've known each other for a long time, which is really a scary thought. Anyway, um, well, because you were in art school about the yeah, same yeah, time. Same time. Yeah, same time. We've just in, in, in a few miles apart from me. I was in art center and he was over there. Probably Oakland. went to the same parties. Art parties. So that's where I knew you from. <laughs> is this the first and or largest um, exhibition of? Um, Kincaid's work, Thomas's work, by um, a contemporary art space not affiliated with Mr. Kincaid. Do you happen to know if it's the first? I, I, I think I kind of said I think it is. Yeah. There's, there's nothing. I mean, I do exhibits all over the country, but they're, you know, our own thing. I mean, we have a commercial business and we sell our products and we do showings that tie to our my professional art. But this. Has absolutely no commercial instinct to it, mm -hmm. which is interesting. That's different. And uh, in this exhibition, uh, this has more uh, Kincaid items than, than any show ever, and it, 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 it has the most. Uh, you know, it has paintings, and it has uh, uh, all the objects and architecture. And, and this is the first time that that everything's been collected in the one in one space. That's n never been done before. He found items I didn't even know that he did. <laughs> I saw a lot of the things in there for the first time. That's true. I walked through. I couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. That's what. That, that's what I was hoping. <laughs> exactly. How's this different then from what you guys are doing there in my right? It's different in a couple ways. Um, it's an attempt to assemble uh, a broad range of Kincaidiana, and that has never been attempted before. It's the treatment of these ancillary licensed products. Uh, as significant cultural objects, and it is the placing them in the context of a fine art temporary exhibit. We don't show, I don't think, any licensed product in our museum space. It's only original art. Uh, you're talking about realism, you know, and this is not realism. I feel like, well, when you see the show, when you get into this living room that we have in the show, I think that it's 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 really realism because you, you get in there. There's a lazy boy. If you if you if you sit down in that room, you're gonna feel like you've seen that room before. It's either your mother's room or your neighbors or your aunts. So I think it's you know in some ways it's like the ultimate realism. It's real life. There's but I mean, having my question is: Do you really think the protests have to do only with your success and money, or do you think it might be about other things? I think they're absolutely angry about the controversial nature of English cottages. It's <laughs> no, um, I, I, I paint fantasy. I mean, what I create is an idyllic world, you know, and, and um, I think the controversy of artists who would show up um, has only to do with, I mean, it's the nature of artists to, to especially right. disdain anyone who's been commercially successful. And I, that's, that's, there's resentment and bitter, bitter grapes. I mean, you're probably selling more than any other living artists today. Um, that kind of rankles some other artists who are struggling and, and, you know, who may say that, heck, I'm trying to do this cutting edge work that, um, you know, expands the boundaries of contemporary theory, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. And then they look at your work and they may see, some, you know, some repetitive icons, the conscious, et cetera. And they may say, uh, you know, particularly artists in this area or students at this school, you know, why are they focusing on his work when I've been struggling all my life to get this cutting edge vision out there? What do you, you know, what do you, what's your reaction to other artists or critics who may say that um, perhaps
perhaps there's not as much sort of originality to some of the pieces that you know, and, and could be desired. Uh, can I? I'll answer that, but no, I go with the Tom. Um, that I think in this exhibition you're looking at a uh, cutting edge installation. So it's what I've done with Tom's work. You know, uh, every single piece that you see is in a special installation. You know, there's, there's different groupings: you know, living room and, and bedroom, Christmas, and uh, all these special installations. So it's it, it's it's like the whole show is is like a piece. It's like a cutting edge piece, so, and, uh, you know, and, and I really think that's true, because you can see how, how, how people are reacting, I mean, and they're not bored with this, I mean, everyone has some, you know, major reaction, that, you know, in one way or another. Yeah, and I, and I, I've just got to say that I, I think the paradigm uh, in the arts took a dangerous shift about 1880, when art became no longer about life, uh, which is what artists always celebrated, and art instead became about art. Art became about the artist, and you know, Clement Greenberg touts this amazing new insight that all great art is about art. That is absolutely bogus as a paradigm, in my opinion. All great art is not about art. All great art is about life, and um, you know, that paradigm would be as ridiculous as saying medicine is all about medicine. No, medicine is about helping people. Art should be about embracing the culture in which the artist lives and forming a dialogue and presenting something to them that forms a reaction, good or bad. A lot of artists are motivated, as you describe it, uh, to walk the cutting edge and they would believe that to urinate on a canvas or to take elephant dung and smear it on a religious icon um, is a cutting edge that would demand attention and a reaction. Interestingly, I paint pretty pictures that are homespun, non-threatening imagery, and the London Times calls me the most controversial artist in America. So just think how good I could do if I used the elephant dung. <laughs> but uh, I, I think the point is that um, the paradigm in which I approach art is different from that of many contemporary artists in that I create art from a servant's paradigm. I try to create art with a message and a audience in mind. Um, I create to communicate, and I don't create out of an iconoclastic uh, impulse. But I create art, I think, uh, from the instinct of cultural service and cultural relevance. And you're going to reap what you sow if you're an artist who uh, its work is very idiosyncratic, then you're going to be doomed to, to have very few people um, embrace your art or the audience or market for your art would be limited. Um, I've always had the opposite approach. I want to self-consciously embrace my audience. And that's okay, because that's what Andy Warhol did. And that's what uh, many artists uh, throughout history did when they created art that was directly in service to the culture in which they lived. Um, so I reserve the right to create my art with that kind of servant's heart mindset. And the joy I have is in seeing real people who will flock to an exhibit like this because they enjoy that art, not because a critic has told them this is significant art. But they'll come and see the art because they themselves respond viscerally to the paintings and so on. And uh, I'd like to say with this exhibition, uh, what I'm doing is I'm presenting uh, Thomas Kin Kincaid's work, his entire range of work, and people can come and see it, and they can they can make their own choice of whether they like it or not. And, and I think that's I think some of the critics of this show are people that haven't seen this show somehow. They have this idea of, of how the show should be, but but I think that when people walk in and see the installations, I think pe people get a uh, a totally different idea.